¿De dónde son? Ecuador. ¿Toros de Ecuador? Sí. ¿Y uh, por qué están aquí? ¿Quieren trabajar? Sí, eh, sí. Porque tenemos ganas de trabajar. Todos sí, queremos todos trabajar. Tenemos ganas de trabajar. Está muy peligroso Ecuador. Sí. Mucha, mucha, mucha inseguridad en todos los sentidos. No hay control en el país. ¿Y a dónde vas en los Estados Unidos? Pensilvania. Pennsylvania. Nueva York. New York. Chicago. 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 Well, the U.S. facing a record number of migrant encounters at the border this month. Joining us to discuss it all, former New York State Homeland Security Advisor Michael Balboni. Michael, Bill Malusian, my colleague's been doing such a great job out in Arizona. A few weeks ago, I saw the same thing in Eagle Pass, Texas. These numbers, we've never encountered them. But one of the things that Texas Governor Greg Abbott did early on that certainly uh, achieve the goal of bringing the border crisis to states well north of the border so they would understand the impact was to bus them to places like New York. In fact, we can show you a breakdown of the busing. You can see 82,900 total. Washington, D.C. got 12,000. I encountered some of those actual buses and 30,000 to New York City. Now, what do you think about what Governor Abbott's been doing? Has this been effective? Was it smart? So what Governor Abbott was very successful in doing was making this a national issue. And when you think about the, the border crisis and the responsibility of protecting the United States, it should not fall to any one state. I mean, there are literally, over the years, millions of people who've come across that border. So how realistic is it that the state of Texas should be the one bearing that burden? This is a national crisis. It should be a national response. Now, in New York City, what's interesting about that number, Greg, that you talked about, is that the, it's 30,000, but yet there's over 100,000 migrants that have come in here, raising the question, how did everybody else get here? And that's really the crux of the problem. We don't know who is coming across the border or how they're getting here. And it's not simply folks coming from South or Central America. You raise such a great point, Michael, and that is the impact that the overall crisis, not just those buses, have had on places like New York. In fact, I was uh, shocked to see this past week an op-ed from former Governor Andrew Cuomo uh, in the New York Post writing this, of all things. I want to show it to you. He said, the title is, if the feds and the state don't take responsibility for the migrant crisis, New York City should sue, saying New York City is already in crisis dealing with a post-COVID economy, high va uh, vacancies, crime, homelessness, uh, out-migration, and budget deficits. It cannot afford to pay the estimated $12 billion in migrant care. It continues on the next page. The city is, in, is the economic engine for the state and region. If the Big Apple falters, the consequences will be devastated, finally culminating in the feds. And the state also mistreat migrants who are overconcentrated in one very dense city packed in modern day welfare hotels in 10 cities. Your reaction? So, uh, this really becomes the question of has New York and Los Angeles and Chicago and San Francisco all put themselves in the target for everybody coming in because they are, quote, sanctuary cities? This has really become a debate. And there is a, uh, a, a custom and practice and a, I'm not sure, it's not a state law, it's a city um, uh, edict, which basically says if you show up to New York, you're going to be sheltered. You're going to be given aid. And what happened is nobody really expected that to be, to ever really come into effect. But yet what this migrant crisis has shown is that the folks who are coming through the border, they know what cities will welcome them. I mean, you just heard in your in the lead up to this interview, you had migrants standing on the border saying, so where are you going? Well, I'm going to New York. I'm going to Chicago. There's no coincidence that those are the cities that are saying we're sanctuary cities. And so what Andrew Cuomo is saying is, in fact, correct. This is a city that is not ready to do this. Mayor Adams has been screaming about this for, the, for over a year, and the city is really not prepared. So now you're talking about budget cuts and we don't have the COVID dollars that used to be there. And the economy is, you know, so the mm -hmm. stock market's doing great, but the question becomes, what is the future? The New York City, the New York State controller, Tom DiNapoli, has said, we're going to be facing some very tough times from the financial perspective 
for the yeah, state. You, you're right. That 60-day right to shelter law has certainly uh, been standing the, the test here in this crisis. But if we widen the lens a little bit to go more macro and talk about the impact, and, and I want to get just one last question in with you on, on this, and that is if you look at the number of illegal immigrant family households, the Center for Immigration Studies did this. Studies showed that three in five 59% of illegal headed households are on some form of welfare. American taxpayers are paying for that, Michael. There's a, a huge question about how, what we're spending per migrant family and what we spend on, say, senior citizens through Medicaid and Medicare. There, there's a, there's whole issue of, about what are our priorities. Are they for folks who come to this country who have not gone through the process, who uh, we don't know who they are, or should it be to U.S. citizens who are taxpaying, and, and in the case of senior citizens in nursing homes, have spent all their lives working, and now they're not getting the same kind of support that folks who just show up in the United States are getting? Michael, I just have 20 seconds. I'm asking everybody I bring on, and you were the New York Homeland Security Advisor. What one piece of advice would you give the folks in Washington from President Biden to the Republicans trying to come up with a resolution here to get this under, under control? Yeah. So, so the, 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 the basic tenet of security means push out your border, which means we shouldn't be having these discussions right at the border. We should be working with the Central American governments, the South American governments. We should work with them, whether it's um, monies into, the, into Mexico to say, look, have a better state of security, tell us who's coming across, better intelligence, more border enforcement teams. That's what we need. Michael ba Balboni, thank you very much. Merry Christmas, and uh, thank you for Merry taking Christmas. time today. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.